Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you the coolest custom creations I happen to find people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. Links to everybody and more are all in the description below. There are compilation photos from builders who have released uh, these images of everything they've done in the last year, which is pretty impressive. So if you have any extra time after this video, I highly recommend that you check out some of these designers, all linked in the description below. And if you haven't had a chance yet to check out the tea shop and restaurant from the designer BT Mox, it is certainly an impressive custom modular building. At over 5,000 pieces, it's very tall, has tons and tons of details on the outside and the inside. Link to that video is in the description below. Links to everything is in the description below. Let's check out some honorable mentions of the week first. Runelander Peterson built the winter landscape. Really fun build for the white water of the waterfall. Wayne De Beer has been making some amazing mecha heads. This is Phobos, my personal favorite one. This tall mock is called Battle of Drekenborg. It's from the designer, the inventor. I really love the tile detailing added to the stairs. Pony Raptor has a model titled Life to the Moon and Back, which is based off of that famous magazine cover. Clopasius has the Techno Mecha Mark II. Rock Raider Miner titled this Tide Poolin. You gotta watch out for the big mama crab in the background. Here are some synth barf minifigures from the designer Shannon Sproul. Some really fun inspiration here. And then this next image comes from the builder My Snail Eats Pizza, and the title is Night Diamond. Great stance for that figure. Lastly, we're looking at Iron Man Mark 43 from Nobu Terry using some of those new pieces for the brick built figure. And let's jump into top 10. First one up here is from the builder Little John. The title is Everdell Castle, and we have a wonderful organic looking fortress. The tower gate in the very center is in fact the trunk of a tree. You can get a sense for the scale uh, with the different animal critters at the top and at the base. The wall is made of a lot of thinner, more curvy branches or maybe even twigs, and the snow detailing feels very realistic. The royal colors certainly are an excellent touch, and now we are moving on to H2 Brick. The designer has built a model titled Charge for Anaxis. So here is a fun Star Wars scene. You've got shock troopers coming down from the ceiling. There's Mace Windu, and they seem to be about to knock out a squadron of battle droids. The floor detailing has that nice mixture of old gray. The cargo container has chipped paint. There are slight subtle angular details along the wall, and it's one of these vignettes that's full of very interesting details the closer and closer you look. Next up is from Josephine Monteroso. The title is Brick Army Knife. Remember not to leave the house without one. And I like how the different pieces here really do outline pretty well uh, all the different tools or functions that you would have with this brick army knife. The Nexo Knight Swords, I believe, has that texturing, which is supposed to imitate maybe a nail file, which is my favorite personal piece used here. And if we're talking like this is one of the larger Swiss army knives, this could be pretty close to a one-to-one -one scale. Now, here's my favorite use of any strange piece for the week. Alex Mox built the Subnautic Research Dome, and we've got a yellow submarine Duplo piece used as the main bit for the hull. When juxtaposed with mostly Technic and specialty pieces, the primary build almost doesn't feel like Lego, and the whole model is contextualized with just colorful organic Lego bricks at the base, which looks like sort of a seafloor with a lot of life. This autonomous submarine uh, definitely has an interesting presence, and I wonder if vehicles like this already exist or will soon in the future. Anyways, we're jumping on over to build number six, if you're keeping track of the numbers. From Ralph Langer, this is titled The Death of a Salesman. Get it? Sail? Sail? Salesman? This ship is mounted on top of these two inward curving micro ocean vignettes that I think have been accepted into LEGO ideas, and I am always, always a sucker for uh, a brick built hull for a larger ship. There's some great, great details here. And I personally love the shaping that you actually get for the sails themselves. Often Lego builds try to imitate or get as close as they can to a pristine looking sail. While in this case, you can see that they're a bit ragged. Maybe the wind is blowing at a weird angle and they're starting to ruffle. And there just feels like there's a lot more texture and life to this part of the ship design. There are some great, great details when you look close in this 
this whole scene stands apart from a classic looking pirate Lego ship in a really, really interesting way. Now we're looking at a model from Kit Kat 1414. This is the new master of Lake Town. We have an amazing dragon build at the top. Love the shaping for the face and the neck and the chest and the wings and coupled together with the extremely animate and almost cartoony shaped design for the main building. We have an extremely complete looking mock. The deck seems to be both on fire and shattered away. There's still snow and ice in the water. No one is having a good time. And the model is brought to life with so many interesting, extremely subtle uh, little building techniques. Lots of uh, brown stud guns are hidden into the model here and there. Harry Potter wand pieces are kind of sticking out in interesting places. An extremely solid Lord of the Rings looking diorama. And now we're looking on to another Another fantasy themed build, but not quite Lord of the Rings. This is from the designer Gino Los, and the title is The Giant. Hands down, favorite part of the model here for me is the mustache. That is just a black wing piece right underneath the nose. It's such a fun piece used for such a fun build for a face. I love the actual piece, the slope piece used for the nose itself. The cartoony angry eyebrows are thick and very simple. He's only got two teeth, it looks like, and a big fat belly with a loincloth. Cloth. This isn't one of those mocks where every piece has to be meticulously placed or even precisely thought out, but instead you've got some great looking shapes creatively used. It shows an extremely intuitive understanding of Lego bricks, and it looks like such a fun little model to have on your shelf. We are now in the final three, and we are looking at an extremely large diorama that the builder says took almost two years to get all the pieces in order to complete it. This is an impressive model both for its large stature and its small, small details. Starting on the right hand side, you can see a sand spider of some kind hanging out in a uh, small alcove. You've got a few lions that are stalking by the trees, perhaps taking a look at the baby elephant. Ostriches, monkeys hanging from the trees. Love the design for those palm trees or palm tree styled trees. The grass is made up of a few different organic, intentionally organic pieces. Then you've got bar details sticking out in dark tan and a ton of Harry Potter wands in dark tan. The texture and color of the dirt and earth changes here and there, which adds just a bit more color and vibrance to what you would think is a more arid and less vibrant scene. And then on the left hand side, there's flamingos and a giant, giant tree with tons of great details. And it's scenes like this that we don't usually get so much attention and scale given in Lego bricks. So it's cool to see uh, such a massive, amazingly built one here. The title is Savannah and the builder is CTR Bartosh. All right, we're jumping over to a fun design from Rokan Chung. This is Princess Leia in the Lego helmet style. I've seen several reviews on the Lego helmets. Some are pretty decent. Some seem to be lacking here and there. And almost everybody agrees that it works just because they're helmets and that organic details at this size wouldn't really work out. But Rokan Chung has absolutely proved me, I was saying that, proved me wrong. Leia looks amazing here. The details for the eyes are especially nice. I know he's used some of those older hinge pieces to just give you a little bit of extra eyebrow, sorry, eyelash detailing. The hair, of course, works quite well, but it really is the face that sells this design more than anything else. I'm not gonna say that it like looks like the face looks like Princess Leia, but it does look like a face and it doesn't feel strange or wonky. In fact, it actually looks very good. It looks better uh, than several of the other helmet designs. This is just the latest build for similarly scaled Lego helmet style busts. So this model maker has tons of experience playing around with face shapes at this size, and I think they've really, really hit their stride here with Leia. Alrighty, now the last model of the week is a Lego Sop with Camel. It is a 1 to 9.2 scale, so it's massive. And this is also a Sop with Camel that is uncovered, so you can see the direct wooden frame underneath. Lego, of course, does have a set that was built quite a long time ago at pretty large scale, if I remember, but certainly not as big as the one we're looking at here and certainly not as detailed, not even close. The round shape for the main engine in the front really, really looks solid. I like the aiming reticle for the machine gun in the very front. Crash Kramer, the designer, put in a huge amount of effort to make the curving details of the frame really stand out. There's a nice bit of curving pneumatic tubes that outline 
the uh, opening for the pilot for the seat. Tons of great shaping done with rigid hoses for the rudders in the back and the outer edges of the wings. And then really there is this uh, finessing, extremely detail-oriented use of strings that wrap around and tie together certain supporting sections of both the inner hull and the outer wings that make you completely forget you're looking at a Lego model. It's a model that I know I'm skipping over other like very impressive technical details, but that's always gonna be the case in a video formatted like this where I'm just kind of quickly showing you my favorite bits of design detail. I highly recommend you check out this guy's Flickr in the description below if you wanna see other large scale, highly detailed airplane models. And that is going to be it for my personal favorite top 10 mocks of the week. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share. This more than other weeks, I suppose, is a good opportunity, I think, to check out some of the links just because there's so many fun compilation photos as well. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.